Unit 10, heat. What is heat? We've talked about it in previous units, but now we're gonna get into what it actually is going on here. So, to begin with, laws of thermodynamics. Laws of thermodynamics, there are three of them, okay? First one, we've already talked about before, energy is conserved. Uh, remember that if you start off with 10 joules, you're gonna end with 10 joules. It just might be in different forms. Second law is that thermal energy can flow from cold to hot only if work is done. So energy can go from cold to hot only if work is done. So like a refrigerator, that's how it works. Third law, absolute zero cannot be reached. Now what they're saying, there's a theory out there that absolute zero uh, means that there's no particle movement. Okay, this again is a theory because we've never actually reached it because you can't. They've gotten close in labs and things like that, but they've never actually reached it and they think they cannot or they know they can't because that's why it's called a law. Okay, absolute zero is zero kelvins where all objects would stop moving. All right, so let's talk about what heat actually is now. So what is heat? Heat is the transfer of thermal energy, right there. Transfer of thermal energy. Uh, because one object to another has a temperature difference. So there's transfer of thermal energy because of temperature differences. How does it flow? How does it transfer? It typically, now remember, typically goes from the warm object to the cold object. So hot to cold. Hot to cold. Now this does not mean it has to be 100 degrees or whatever. It's going from the hotter, so it could go from negative 5 object to the negative 15 object. That's why um, when you put your hand on uh, the stove, your hand gets warm because the heat's going from the stove to your hand. Okay. Two words that people in general like to get confused with each other is heat and temperature. You need to make sure you know the difference. So heat is all about the transfer of thermal energy. Temperature um, is the average kinetic energy. Now you may think it's how hot or cold something is, which yes, it does also tell you how hot or cold something is, but it does that because it tells you the average kinetic energy. The faster the objects are moving, the warmer the object's gonna feel. All right, this is how fast the objects are moving. It is measured in Celsius and Kelvins. Yes, Fahrenheit as well, but we're not gonna be using Fahrenheit. The more an object is heated up, the faster the particles are moving, okay? The more heated up it is, the faster it is moving. Thermal energy is the total potential and kinetic energy of the particles. This depends on the mass and the, the phase and state that it's in, okay? So thermal energy is the potential and the kinetic energy of all the particles in the object, and it depends on the state and the mass of it. Temperature increases, um, expansion occurs. So as temperature increases, thermal expansion occurs. So that's what's happening here. This um, liquid or whatever substance is inside of it, at 70 degrees, it's only about that much. As you get to 180, it fills the container. This is how a thermometer works, okay? In a thermometer, it's not like it's adding the liquid to it as it's getting warmer. That whatever liquid's at the bottom, mercury or alcohol or whatever type of thermometer, as the thermometer is being heated, that's what's causing it to go, that liquid to go up the thermometer because of expansion, all right? Then, as temperature decreases, you get contraction. Uh, it occurs, particles move closer together, so um, shrinkage in solidification and cooling. So this is what's happening with um, the sidewalks. That's why you have cracks in the sidewalks and in bridges and things like that because during the winter and during the summer, those, those concrete is expanding and contracting depending on the temperature happening, okay? Um, one last topic here, specific heat. 
specific heat is the amount of heat needed to raise one gram by one degree Celsius. Amount of heat to raise one gram, one degree Celsius. The higher the specific heat, the longer it takes to heat or cool it. So for example, uh, let's see here, we've got um, aluminum has a specific heat of 0.22 versus, let's say water, all right, has a specific heat of one. Since aluminum has a specific heat of 0.22, it's gonna cool down or heat up a lot quicker than water is. And a lot of times if you look at the metals, gold here, gold is extremely small. It heats up and cools down super quick, all right? The bigger the number, the longer it takes for it to heat up and cool down. This is why it takes a while for that water to um, start to boil and things like that because it takes a lot of energy to get it there. All right, so this is showing you that exact same thing I just talked about. You've got gold versus water. I know this picture might be a little bit hard. You're heating them up with the same amount of heat, but the gold is gonna heat up quicker than the water because again, this is like 0.03 and this is one. So the gold warms up super quick compared to the water. And then gold and aluminum, same thing. Aluminum's gonna take a little bit longer than gold is. It heats up quick. So that just means, again, let me go back to this slide real quick. Right here, this is the key to this. Okay, the higher the specific heat, the longer it takes. The lower the specific heat, the quicker it is because it takes less heat for it to heat up.